Can you imagine? Parents were bringing their children to Jesus so that he could touch and bless them. And Jesus' disciples saw the children as being a disruption to what Jesus was doing. Hmm. So they spoke sternly to the parents. And most likely to the children too. doing what they could to discourage them and to drive them away so that Jesus could get on with the important work of the kingdom. They actually probably thought that they were doing the right thing by keeping the children away from Jesus. However, they were making the wrong assumption. We know this because when Jesus saw what his disciples were doing, he became angry and he said, let the children come to me. Don't you hinder or stop them. And what Jesus did next surely took the disciples by surprise. He says it's to such as these little children that the kingdom of God belongs. What? The kingdom of God belongs to the little children. Well, by this, he was saying that it's the people who are like these little children who belong to the kingdom of God. In other words, people who don't always feel the presence of Jesus in their lives. People that sometimes have experienced being hindered from being a part of having a close relationship with Jesus. People who've been turned away for a variety of reasons and with a variety of assumptions along the way. Little children. Little children who are brought to God's presence by parents and friends and loved ones, neighbors, aunts, uncles, cousins, guardians, brought to Jesus so that they might have some kind of an opportunity to at least to experience something of the love of God that's available to them in Christ Jesus. It's available to all of us in Christ Jesus. It's a mighty gift that we are being given. And there are those who from time to time perhaps not even aware that they're doing it, who turn the children away. And make it too much noise. They got too much energy. They're running around in the aisles. Would that we all had some of that. We got to sit at the table by themselves so that, well, you know, we've got our cronies and our buddies and our friends and we don't, you, we can't separate ourselves from them to, to fellowship with children. But if we don't fellowship with the children, if we don't entrust ourselves to them in some way, how in the world are they ever going to experience any of the joy of the kingdom of God? And I know it's hard. It's hard when you get friends and you want to go and be with them, 
spend as much time as possible with them, but, but sometimes we gotta break out of that mold. Sometimes we got folks in our midst who are, are not a part of our little groups that we have within the church. And, and so if somebody doesn't do something to step out and to invite and to welcome and to bring these folks into a closer relationship with the rest of the body, then how will they ever know that they are truly welcome? It's one thing to say you're welcome. It's another thing to welcome, to encourage. The church is an important part of the life of children. The vacation Bible school they had here, you saw the children that were up here this morning. We know that they had, a, had an experience of some of the teachings of Jesus as they encountered their time together for three days when some of you were willing to give some of your time to go and to be with them and to help them to learn and to read the stories to them of God's word. And for that we're grateful. But there's a sense that all of us disciples have the opportunity and have the, the calling to be a part of the lives of the children, regardless of their age. I remember in my home church going to Sunday school. I have a picture of me sitting behind the Sunday school in one of those little Sunday school chairs. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but I haven't always been this big. I was sitting there in my little, uh, probably my Easter outfit that my grandmother got for me with my coat and tie and shoes and everything all polished up and neat. And the name Francis Bone came to me. Francis Bone was, I think, probably the first teacher that I encountered in, in that setting along the way. And I'm sure that she probably never expected that sometime in the midst of life that this little guy sitting in that chair would somehow, somewhere along the way, be called to ministry and seek to preach God's word. You see, we never know which one of these children are also having this call placed upon them. And, and one of the things that we sometimes forget to do and fail to do is, is we, we ask children what they want to be when they grow up. Anybody ever ask you that question? Somebody asked me that last week. <laughs> what do you want to do when you grow up? And perhaps we should rephrase that question and say, what is it that God wants you to do when you grow up? Because when we ask the question, we're expecting them all to come become MBAs or engineers or, or something, well, you know, that allows them to bring home a good paycheck. Amen. <laughs> but God has something for each of us to do. It, perhaps the mo one of the most important ministries that we have right now at this particular juncture in time is to do everything that we can to, to encourage children to come into the presence of Jesus. To walk along beside of them, to get to know them. To get to know their personalities. I got my batteries recharged this morning before I came in here by a youngster who saw a couple of AA batteries on my desk and decided you need to be recharged, so he stuck one behind this ear and one behind that ear. <laughs> and I thanked him for recharging me. But it's a precious opportunity that we have to truly influence the lives of children. 
And I hope we never come to that place where we'll do what we can to discourage and to drive them away because they got too much energy or maybe a little bit disruptive or, well, you know, be children. <laughs> After all, that is what they are at this particular juncture in their life. Amen. I got my good strong amen there. And it's great to hear it. To me, in some ways, it's kind of sad that when we have our children in here that we end up sending them off back to the back room back here for a time of Sunday school, although they probably would rather be back there than be out here with us. But anyway. But how will they ever learn about the worship that we do? How will they ever learn the hymns that we sing? How will they ever witness a child, one of their contemporaries, having the experience of being baptized? I remember being baptized. And I was baptized as an infant. And the minister that baptized me did something he wasn't supposed to do. He used a red rose to dip into the water. And maybe it was because of the red rose that I remember my baptism, but I wasn't but about, well, less than two years old. And that same minister wrote on my baptismal certificate May Reggie grow up to be a preacher of God's word. I wasn't aware of that until at my mother's death, we were going through things and she had my baptismal certificate and there it was, those words written on the bottom. So you and I have an awesome responsibility to the children that come our way to love them, to care for them, to guide them, to teach them, to let them teach us. Some of the joy that we may have forgotten somewhere along the way to experience anew the power of God's recreating spirit in the world in which we live and move and have our being. So let us encourage the children. Let us walk with the children. Let us be like children as much as possible. I know it's hard sometimes when your bones are aching. So that they might come to the place where they say, wow, I do feel Jesus in my heart today. And I'm thankful. So be it. Amen.